How popular is a universal basic income in Canada? I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. So over in America, the concept of a universal basic income is being talked about in their elections, mostly because of Andrew Yang, but how about in Canada? So Gallup put out an article today that outlined the results of a survey they conducted in partnership with Northeastern University. The aim was to figure out how many Canadians, Americans, and Brits were in favor of a universal basic income. The premise was that a UBI would be used to support people who were displaced by things like AI and technological advancements. Despite that, it would be given to everyone, hence the term universal in the name. Some people mix it up and think the UBI would only go to certain groups of individuals, but that's not really the case. So, given those premises and the survey, it found that 75% of Canadians were in favor of a UBI. 77% of those in the UK were also in favor, so a little bit more than us over in Canada. And in America, only 43% of participants were in favor of it. The survey population was roughly 10,000 people across all the countries, so although it wasn't completely exhaustive, it was still quite a fair number. So, despite the disparity we see here between the American figures and Canada's, the approval ratings across the board are still pretty high. Even having 43% of the people who were responding in the surveys back in an idea, that's still a pretty significant chunk. It's hard to get over 50, especially when you have a very polarized population like in America, so it's a pretty good sign, and as time goes on, I fully expect that figure to grow. Canada is ahead of the curve, and I'd argue this is because of our society. We are more social based over here. Having things like medical expenses paid for and a plethora of generous social services is part of the Canadian culture. UBI is supposedly an upgrade to this, and it will cut out ineffective government programs while helping everyone. So, not surprised that an idea like that has that high of a rating. For me personally, context really is king here, and that's the most crucial aspect of the UBI debate. It's virtually a certainty, that is, that in the future we are going to need it, because we are looking at a time period of predicted mass unemployment. According to Gallup, some estimates predict that 50% of jobs will be automated within the next 10 years. Now, of course, that's on the higher end. They probably picked out the highest estimate they could for that, but some more realistic estimates place it at around 10%, which is still quite significant. That's a lot of people who will be left without a work because of things like AI and automation. We're not talking too far into the future as well. This is all within the coming decade. If we do not start planning for this now, the day will come when society is on the brink of collapsing due to large swaths of the population not being able to live. The rate of technological progress is also quite insane. Wrapping your head around that is just something else. Right now we're on an exponential curve, so as time goes on, we can expect things to get even better faster. It took humanity millions of years to even figure out how to get a modern land vehicle, but once we got to that key milestone, from that point, it was only a matter of a few hundred years until things like space travel started. Now, we see breakthroughs in scientific fields on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. New things are coming out all the time, and as I mentioned, the rate at which they come out is growing even faster. It's not outside the realm of possibility to envision a future, maybe 100 years down the road, where 80% of all jobs are automated, and after that, maybe 90%, and then 99%. This is the reality of the trajectory that we're currently on. I have to make clear though that this is not inherently bad. In fact, it can be quite the good thing. It all comes down to the way we handle it though. If we don't plan for these things, well, it will obviously be a disaster in that case. If 10%, and that's using a generous estimate, of the current workforce is looking at unemployment within the next decade, that burden is going to fall on somebody and the most likely candidate is the government. And one thing to keep in mind too, if the government is the person or the group who the burden falls upon, that's the same as placing it upon society at large because our tax dollars are what's going to fund those people's reintegration into society. 
we also can't just leave them to their own devices because the choices they make might simply jeopardize the rest of civilization if they are faced with the need to survive due to being made completely unemployable from technology. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. It's not too far-fetched to imagine maybe another decade later where even the most intelligent people are facing a similar reality. Welfare will be through the roof and it will worsen as time goes on, meaning things like a bigger budget deficit and a reductions to other services. We already are struggling to pay it down. We are paying obscene amounts trying to just pay the interest on these debts and we're expecting that to go up. Not a recipe for success for any country. It's far easier to keep a ship afloat now than to try to bring it back to surface level after it sinks. That's where a UBI can come in. People are throwing around a bunch of numbers, but $1,000 a month seems to be pretty popular. The idea behind the UBI is not to let you live lavishly solely with it. It's meant to essentially keep you alive. Maybe that means living in a small area eating ramen noodles, but there are ways to improve upon that. It's a certain base level that's established for everybody. Maybe you find a partner who also has a UBI and you can pool your resources together. You can maybe now afford to work a part-time job here and there. You can pick up the occasional shift for some extra spending money. You can even start a hobby and look at ways to monetize it as people will presumably have more free time now given the mass unemployment. That's one of the bright sides, I guess. There are a couple caveats that come with all this, though. First, the UBI has to replace all of the other social security services in the long run. Maybe when it starts, you only take out a couple, but you simply can't afford to have UBI and a fully funded welfare system at the same time. It's just not feasible. UBI costs a lot of money. Every single adult in Canada will be entitled to that payment. If you double up and give the UBI and the welfare, well, there goes all the budget and then some. Country would sink and then everyone would fail as well. The second caveat is that the UBI truly has to be universal. That means everyone gets it. You can't start putting arbitrary restrictions based on things like income or what kind of jobs you have because if you do that, you sow the seeds of discourse. People will actively oppose the UBI because they feel cheated. They're paying into it and they're getting nothing from it. It would also then beg the question, why do we call it a UBI when it's not really universal? And what's the difference between that and the previous welfare state system that we had? The answer would be not very much difference. And now we get to the third caveat, and it's probably the most important. Income tax cannot be the driving factor behind a UBI funding. It's a common misconception, and just simply taxing the rich is not the way to go about this. First of all, you have to keep in mind the problem we're addressing. UBI is meant to supplement people due to mass unemployment that's predicted going into the future. If employment is in danger and we're trying to base the solution around taxes from employment, it's a logical fallacy and it's a cycle that's meant to implode on itself. There's simply not enough money there and as time goes on given these trends, income taxation is going to decrease. You're going to have problems. So, What's the alternative? The best way to fund a UBI is a corporate efficiency tax of sorts. And that's going to come from the cost savings that companies experience from things like automation and AI. It's far cheaper to have one machine doing the job of 10, 20, 30 people versus paying all those individual wages and benefits. Those machines are a massive cost saving tool to companies. And as a result, they should be forced to pay some of that back to society in the form of this efficiency tax. And it's beautiful because the more efficient the company gets, the higher the tax can scale. The company is still free to make its profit. But once they start benefiting en masse due to society not being the ideal workforce, well, it's a problem for them too. Because if society has no money, the company can't function. Therefore, as the company functions more efficiently, it makes sense to give more money back to people so the people can use the money on the companies. It's a winning cycle and not akin to what happened if we relied it solely based on personal income tax. Also, support for the idea in Canada falls below 50% if it means paying more taxes. And that was one of these survey questions. As you can see, almost 25% of people dropped out 
because the idea of paying more taxes neutralizes the benefit of the UBI to them. And I would say rightfully so. People will just say, well, if you're going to tax me, I'd rather keep that money, not pay you it, and not get the UBI. Especially depending on how much of a tax increase we're talking about here. There's also another possibility though, despite the UBI approach. So when machines came around during the industrial era, people felt they were in a similar situation as we are in now. And you can probably look throughout history, it's come up numerous times. People think, oh, we're going to lose all our jobs. How do we survive? Machines, science, and technology are coming for us. Well, the answer in the past has been that the dominant sectors have shifted. For example, in the recent history, they've moved to the service and knowledge areas. Now, that wasn't immediately obvious to everyone as a way out of the predicament. Maybe we also have an area to explore that will divert us away from mass unemployment, but we just can't see it. If in the future all the work is within maybe the maintenance industry or the programming software, well, that could boost employment and it could just signal the growth of the market in a different area with the reduction of it in others. Lots of us are working jobs that did not exist even 50 years ago. Maybe podcasting, for example, and that's another avenue too, going down the entertainment route. If people are unemployed en masse, but they get a UBI, well, they're still going to need something to do with their time, so maybe entertainment blossoms and people can make a living off of that. The point is, we don't know how things will play out yet. We may be too nearsighted to see any other options, but we should prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Any responsible government should be doing so. All I can say is, it's an exciting time to be alive, and that's for sure. So, that's about it for today. Thanks for joining me, and if you enjoyed the content, be sure to leave a review and share. You can also find me on Twitter at PerryPlatform. I'll see you soon.